Hi, today I'll be showing you the process of this painting I just finished of Pedro Pascal as the Mandalorian. We'll talk more about the concept a bit later, but for now let me just explain what I'm doing. So even though this will be an acrylic painting, I'm starting off with a watercolor base. I've been doing this a lot in my paintings recently, and I, I do this for a few reasons, but mostly because it's a lot quicker. <laughs> it's easy to get a solid base of good colors down with watercolor, and I've noticed it's also helped me with my color theory. I was really excited about like all those reds and purple colors in the sky, and then you know the dark teal and the green colors in his armor. I was able to push these colors a lot further, just knowing that if they didn't work out, I, they would just be covered up later. So once his face is filled in, I break out the acrylic paints. I'm using craft paint. What I like about it is that it has a matte finish. And um, and you'll see as I work through the process, it's very thin. So it lends itself well to working in like layers. I'll be doing a lot of layers in this painting. <laughs> um, so now I'm just working on getting some paint all, all over the paper. I'm moving around the image and just start starting to build up some sense of an opaque color on top of the watercolor. Once I've got some base colors down, the first area I really dive into is the sky. The sky takes up a lot of the image, even though it's not the focal point. And I, I knew that if I established some of the tones, um, it would help me make a cohesive color pal palette later. And I think this really helped me later on in the painting to, to make sort of like a cohesive color space. I didn't know this at this point, but I ended up incorporating a lot of the colors from the sky into his armor. So it ended up working out perfectly that I had, I started with the sky. <laughs> um, normally I do the backgrounds last. Next, I try to put some base colors on the armor. I do end up reworking these colors a lot. When I had first prepared my reference images, I was trying to combine um, combine the pose of one image with the color palette of another image, which ended up not working as well as I had hoped. For now, this is what the armor looks like. I my hand does end up covering some of the some of his some of the process. Um, I think I eventually realized my hand is in front of the camera, but. I did at least realize I needed to zoom in to see his face better. I'm obsessed with these colors down here. The like dusty mauve pinks are perfect. And then I stop that to add some black. Um, in other paintings I've had some challenge with contrast so I'm making sure I'm getting the full range of values right away and clarifying some of those dark shadows. Back to his face and his hair again. Obviously the focal point of the image is his face, for good reason, but I do, I do come back to this area a lot. I think it's really satisfying to watch the likeness come. I think it does, I think the painting vaguely looks like him um, right away because of the mustache, but I think it's amazing to see I, I'm really proud of, you know, how much it does end up looking like him, especially like this early on in the process. And then I'm starting to render the hair a little bit. It was kind of one flat color in the beginning, but I'm starting to get some highlights there. I tend to do this a lot, but I went crazy with the highlights and then toned it down later. And then now I'm working on the helmets. I think the helmet is like sort of a secondary focal point, so I, I realized I needed to render that <laughs> quite a bit. I'm also working on making the helmet like three-dimensional and you know bringing in some of those the various colors. I should also probably mention that is Fluffy <laughs> in the camera in the camera there. Uh, she accompanied me through the process of this painting, so she she put in the time as well. Yeah, so these, these colors on the armor end up changing a lot. Um, this image was based off of a photo shoot from Vanity Fair, and 
While I didn't use like the official image, I pulled a few screenshots from the behind the scenes video. I had composited a few images together, so I was unsure about the direction I wanted to go in. One aspect of his costume design I didn't appreciate until I made this painting was his, his hands. I'm obsessed with the blue triangles on his hands and his, his brown fingered gloves. I think it's such a tiny detail, but I think it adds a lot of character. And of course, I, I spent a lot of time working on his hands. Though, to be fair, I did spend a lot of time on a lot of different places in this piece, so that's not saying much. Uh, you'll notice over the course of this painting, his armor gets less blue and gray and slightly more pink and purple, so keep an eye on that if you'd like. But again, I'm moving around the painting a lot because I wasn't entirely sure about the colors, but it was helpful to get the image looking cohesive, you know, by not getting bogged down by one area. So I'm working on the armor again, and at this stage, I'm really starting to dive into the details. The colors are are basically figured out, and now it's time for rendering. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but I noticed a little bit of crunchiness in his armor. I did pull out this bigger brush, and I made some like bigger areas of flat color. I pulled out the flat brush as well to help solidify um, some of like the different planes in the armor. Um, I'm adding a bit more contrast in some areas, so I, I noticed I needed some like deep shadows in the sky and then sort of like the, the mountains in the distant background. And I think, um, again, I love these colors at the bottom there. I think the darker tones there really help to balance the image and, and help with the, the illusion of perspective. Normally, I approach backgrounds as um, I don't normally paint a lot of landscapes and if I add backgrounds behind characters, usually it's a second thought. Um, but I, I realized the background of this image was so important, especially at this point. Um, what I love about the sky and just the whole thing is that I I have like a lot of leading lines. So like all of the clouds and like the horizon are all pointing to the figure and I just I think it just works so well. It really helps like emphasize the focal point. I think it just adds a lot of depth and visual interest and I think especially like the circular shapes in the clouds provide such an interesting contrast to like the metallic rigidity in his costume design also. I'm not exactly sure what these are, but I'm finally clarifying these shapes on his strap thing and adding those shadows underneath them. I think we're in the final stages of this painting, um, so I'm kind of making my final pass around the painting. Maybe you've noticed, but I've definitely been making rotations around this painting, you know, going from background, armor, face, helmet. In this, in this pass around the painting, I'm getting into like smaller details now and adjusting adjusting some colors based on um, kind of colors I've established in other places. So at this point as I finish up his his shoulder pads I've I think I'm finally have made the armor look cohesive and again it's sort of an illusion but I think it's near this point finally starts to truly look metal and like it's reflecting the colors in the sky. It's at this point where I'm I'm starting to get a bit feverish trying to finish up all the details so I can be done. It's really hard to render with acrylic paint, but I'm doing my best to blob down paint and sort of make the illusion of blended colors. But if you look at the painting closely, <laughs> you could you can definitely tell it's just an illusion for sure. And then I realize as I'm finishing up both of the shoulder pads. I've got, you know, the bottom half of the image to still work on. So I'm starting to render his gloves and then I work down a bit more too. I really appreciate like the greenish tones in his clothing. 
I don't think any of these colors were left in like the final image from the photo shoot. I think typically his clothes look black, but I think really bringing out the green rounds out all the other colors in the image. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is that I'm looking at the reference images on my laptop, which is sitting on my lap, mostly out of frame. This is my first time making a painting on a proper easel, and it was really annoying to have to keep looking between my desktop computer monitors and the painting, which is what I did at the beginning. But eventually I figured out I could use my laptop, so that ended up working really well because I like to keep my references as close to the painting or drawing as possible. Okay, back to his face. I think this is uh, the last time I work on his face. Um, I'm adding some highlights and shadows and making sure that it's it's what I want it to look like. Okay, maybe it's, maybe it's at this point where the image is, I'm just adding final details. I was making tweaks to his face and um, just fixing kind of smaller things that um, I didn't notice right away. So like little highlights, the smaller highlights on his armor, cleaning up some, some of like the edges that should have been straight, but I didn't paint straight. I also want to just take a chance to say like how proud I am of this painting. I've done other acrylic paintings in my past experiences as an artist, but it's been a while. I mostly I mostly have been doing digital art recently, and I'll just say this is like my second acrylic portrait I've done like at this scale. I normally work really small, and working at this size really like allowed me to focus on like smaller details in this painting, and I also will just say I'm I've got this painting hanging up on my wall. <laughs> it's It's been, I think, a few weeks since I finished it, and I'm just finishing up the video now. And I love looking at this painting. It's honestly probably one of my favorite things I've made. <laughs> it was just so outside my comfort zone, not with just like the scale, but also like subject matter. I normally do portraits, but I almost never paint like more of the body. I also almost never paint materials like metal and I also wouldn't consider myself a landscape artist so painting all those clouds was also like outside my comfort zone and I'm really I guess what I'm most proud of are the colors I mean we all saw what the armor looked like at the beginning but everything from like the pinks and the purples in the background to the more subtle colors in his armor and again the the greenish tones i think really round it all out so i'm finishing up the left side of the image here adjusting highlights and shadows on that glove and making any final changes there and then moving down i think that's the dark saber or some holster uh it's hard to tell but yeah back to the process at this point this is the point where i realized i haven't painted his thigh armor at all so I'm doing that now and taking the same colors from other spots in the painting and just putting them down. I will say this painting probably took me at least more than 30 hours to do. There were times it felt so painstaking but seeing it come together in a video like this makes it look effortless almost and I don't know I might be an artistic genius? Uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> um, Anyway, we'll, we'll look at some final clips of the painting. Um, again, I look at this all day every day basically now that it's on my wall and I'll continue doing that until I die. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.